Hello, this is Taras from Motion State Aquatics. This is the, a video about uh, numerous different uh, fish diseases that are common in the aquarium industry. And to start off, uh, of course, will be ick, the infamous parasite, which infests uh, farmed fish and aquarium fish alike. For many aquarium keepers, it's the first uh, pest that they deal with. And for many, it can be very discouraging because if left untreated, it can result in 100% mortality and kills fish in horrible ways. So in this video, we'll be shortly uh, identifying how to uh, recognize the organism, how to prevent it. And uh, if your fish do get it, uh, we'll identify the best ways to treat it. So what the heck is ick? So Ichthyopterius multifilis literally translates as the fish louse that has many kids. Uh, and basically what it is, is a parasitic ciliate. So it's a really small microscopic critter defined by a series of little hairs uh, surrounding, I think like a little disc with a little, uh, little hairs coming off of it. That's what a ciliate is. And this particular ciliate uh, has various life stages and uh, it, this one is adapted to uh, infest the skin of fish. So you see here, there's a gourami below, and those white splotches are massive bodies of colonies of this parasite. And they are right now tapping into the skin of the fish, the epithelium, they are digging inside and they are eating at uh, basically vacuoles of nutrition that the fish needs, and then also directly killing um, the fish's living cells and also sapping at the fish's blood uh, once the cases get even more pronounced. So it really is a horrible way for a fish to uh, die because it's kind of like having your skin and blood getting drained out of you at the same time. So it's very important that we learn how to identify it and uh, learn how to uh, save our fish. Key to curing any fish disease is understanding what disease you're dealing with, what the life cycle is of the organism that's causing it, and then finding ways to just interrupt that. Uh, so. Uh, Ichthyopterius multifilis, it's got three major life stages you're going to know about. What, what you see on the fish, those white splotches, that's just the last stage. That's called the trophon. It's these big colonizing bodies that are actually like oil rigs. They're tapping the fish and they're eating from it. So once those feel like it's time to uh, leave, uh, especially when, a, let's say, an infected fish dies, uh, all those little white splotches will give birth into these uh, tomons, which give birth to these little free swimming therons. And it's the therons that you got to look out for. Uh, cause the therons, they're the ones that are swimming around and they're tapping, uh, new, new, new fish. So we have the, the trophons on the fish itself as the oil rigs, and then they're deploying into these cyst like structures that are the trophons. And those are the ones that are like, will hide out in the sand bed and think of them as like a dormant egg. Like they'll just hide out in the sand or in the rocks. And they're the ones that will wait until conditions are just right uh, for, for an infestation to occur. And then the therons are these swimming around little harpoons. And they're the ones that smell the fish and, and they seek out and they actually infest the, the fish. And, and then they turn into the, the oil rigs, the trophons again. They'll feed off the fish's skin and continue the life cycle. So, so you have the three stages, the oil rig, the, the, the invulnerable storage egg, and then the free swimming little harpoons, uh, trophon, uh, tomont, and theront. Uh, you have to, knowing the three is extremely helpful because it, it, it will make treatment possible. So here's the kicker. Uh, the, the storage egg, the cyst that lays in your sand bed, uh, that part you really can't cure. Uh, it can't really be killed by even even formalin or or it's pretty invulnerable to most treatments. Even even UV is pretty good tolerance for, it. and they're heavy, so they don't even necessarily go through most UVs. Uh, same thing when the when the parasite is on the fish and the white splotches, it can't really be hurt in any way either, in in a way that's not going to damage the fish itself. So it's only the free swimming. Therons, the infective stages, those spores, those are the only things that you can actually kill directly through treatment. 
So everything else uh, that we'll be doing is uh, to strengthen the fish's natural immune system because they'll be able to kick out the invasive stage themselves and to make the, the aquarium undesirable for the storage eggs to hatch. So by preventing the eggs from hatching, uh, having the, the fish be as happy as they can to kick the uh, parasites that are already on them, and by directly killing the free swimming therons, uh, that's the most effective way to eradicate your ick problem uh, as soon as possible and prevent um, uh, uh, fish casualties. So a quick guide to identifying ick. Uh, so again, very obvious and characteristic. It's called white spot disease for a reason. So it manifests as these giant white splotches. Um, usually fish will be breathing heavy as they'll be in extreme distress as they're getting tapped of their bodily fluids. And uh, fish that are uh, haven't yet manifested the white splotches but are still being infected may do this behavior called flashing where they where they dip down and hit, hit the gravel or a rock or even the side of the tank in an attempt to uh, seemingly scratch something off their skin. So all these signs um, are, are a little bit characteristic that ick infection is either here or on the way. So the best way to not have to deal with ick is to prevent it from entering your tank in the first place. And if it does enter your tank, prevent it from being able to occur uh, and infect your fish. Uh, so proper quarantine is paramount, uh, making sure that you know the source of your fish, that you trust your local fish store, you know the origin of your fish, how long it's been there, and what the environmental conditions are of the tank that you're getting it from. So you can really evaluate and make a good decision of whether or not you, you have a fish at risk. Also being able to identify any of the white splotches is helpful for just being able to be like, nope, no fish out of that tank. Uh, maintaining stable water quality is key. Most fish have an ability to fight off ick, even if it is present, but it's really when something goes south that the fish get a little bit weaker and sick that uh, ick is able to infest. So even even though you're trying to cure ick, uh, keep in mind that there, there may be a baseline issue while your fish were stressed in the first place. Uh, minimizing fish stress is, is paramount to uh, preventing ick long term. Uh, and also many freshwater fish with a couple of exceptions uh, are quite tolerant uh, tolerant of, of slightly elevated salt levels and it cannot do slightly elevated salt levels so even just having a few grams uh, per, 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 per gallon of salt uh, really will exponentially help um, prevent ick and will overall benefit most freshwater fish because uh, they they are from rivers and, and areas where they get a little bit of salt discharge and it helps with their slime coat in the first place and uh, this obviously is not available to most fish, but if people have particularly prized specimens that um, cannot get treatment, perhaps for public aquaria, uh, they are working on vaccinations, which uh, will allow uh, fish uh, to boost their natural immunity to um, ick infestation. So, oh no. You find yourself having a rapid uh, ick infestation. All your fish have a bunch of white splotches. Uh, some of them are starting to die. Uh, you don't know what to do. So this is my suggestion when it comes to curing and treating for an established ick infestation. Uh, there's a variety of chemical treatments, copper, formalin, malachite green, that are very uh, effective at killing the ick parasite. However, these are kind of uh, extreme and I think rather risky. For this parasite because they will destroy your biofilter and by destroying your biofilter may really make worse an underlying issue of water quality why uh maybe why your fish were getting stressed and why they were getting sick in the first place so i would avoid the chemical treatments when it comes to ick what i would recommend is progressively increasing the salinity uh to about five parts per thousand between two and five parts per thousand so that's five uh, grams for every liter of, of seawater. So I would increase uh, that um, salt level because that will directly kill the ick parasite and prevent it from being able to do its thing. It's, it's unable to be um, functioning at those slightly elevated uh, salt levels, which again, know your fish, but most freshwater fish will be fine at a slightly, slightly higher salt level. Um, and also, I would definitely have uh, 
know your fish. Uh, definitely don't do this with cold water fish, but any fish that can handle temperatures between 82 and 85 degrees, go ahead and get them between 82 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit. This will accelerate the life cycle of the ick parasite. So more therons will get exposed and killed in the salt quicker. Um, and also uh, it'll uh, make all the white spots on the already infected fish uh, that bail ship and die quicker uh, and, and not be protected by the fish. So uh, by having the higher temperatures and uh, the increase of salinity, that's the best way to stop this particular parasite dead in its tracks and uh, the best product for this is some good old fashioned API aquarium salt, which is uh, cheap, effective, uh, and just a good prophylactic and stress reducer for your fish, even when they're not sick. So uh, come on down uh, to OSA and um, pick up a bottle uh, if you uh, need some. And um, feel free to ask any of our talented staff uh, questions about uh, your fish and any diseases they may or may not have.